Good morning. Namaste to each of you. Thank you for joining me this morning to honor your mind and your body and your spirit. Just take a moment to become present. Just find a nice, comfortable seated position where you can sit with your spine and back of your neck nice and tall, opening your chest and opening your diaphragm for breathing and opening your heart. Gently close your eyes and soften your thoughts. Soften your eyes. Soften your shoulders. And soften your heart. Observe your breath as it is, soft and gentle, breathing life into you with each inhale and relaxation with each exhale. Feel the grace of being present, returning to that awareness again and again. may open your eyes now. For this morning's intention, you may think of a positive word or phrase to have with you on your mat and perhaps carry with you throughout the day. This morning's intention I'd like to talk about is the new Ayurvedic season that we're in. So as a refresher, Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. It's an ancient health system, which is over 5,000 years old, that focuses on three doshas or energies. The energies are vata, pitta, and kapha. All three energies are present in each of us in varying levels, determined by our mind, our body, and our spirit. And I think um, I've mentioned in the past, you could take quizzes for this. Um, I've taken several <laughs> over a course of a couple of years. Um, and they're pretty consistent. I'm a pitta vada, um, almost equal measure and with a little teeny bit of kapha. And the goal of this science, the Ayurvedic science, is to keep you in balance. And it keeps you in balance through what you eat and through emotional and wellness routines. Doshas are applied to other things and there are dosha seasons. So summer, starting Tuesday, and actually starting uh, yesterday when it got warmer, <laughs> um, summer is a pitta season, which is governed by the elements fire and water. So when you think of uh, summer, think of heat, light, and humidity. And to create balance in pitta season, you would do things that are opposite in balance in nature. So that's that's the kind of the um, essence of the Ayurvedic system. It's it kind of you're getting balanced by doing um, the opposite because they believe um, like increases like. So if you're hot, if you're a pitta and you're doing hot things, you're just going to get hotter and hotter. Um, so you want to balance that by offsetting by cooling things. So in the pitta season in the summer, you would obviously try to do cooling activities. Um, and perhaps those would be done during the early morning, or late afternoon, or evening, um, moon walks, walking in the moon, the moon is very cooling, it's a yin. Um, essence so it's a very cooling thing and right now with the fireflies out in full force um, it'd be a lovely thing to do in the evening you also want to eat foods that are cooling and i have a link i'm going to share with you that um lists a whole bunch of of 
dishes, drinks and, and meals, dishes that are good for pitta. So they're co basically cooling type of um, dishes. So have fun with those recipes if you'd like. And those foods would incorporate um, sweet items, not sugar, but fruits, um, bitter, which would be leafy greens and astringent, which are legumes like chickpeas and lentils and such. Um, so today we're gonna actually be doing some um, cooling things. One of them is um, a breathing technique, a pranayama, which is called sitali and um, another one that's called sikari. So both are, are designed to cool your mind and your body and calming and re reducing anger. Great things for pittas to do um, and if you're hot. So with Sitali, um, you would curl your tongue like you're sucking through a straw and you inhale through that curl, close your mouth and then exhale through your nose. Now, if you aren't able to curl your tongue, you can just kind of let it, um, just have it hang open like a dog panting and breathe the air in that way. That um, creates that same cooling effect. But if you can curl your tongue, bring the air in, close your mouth, and then exhale through your nose. You try that a couple of times. So the other one, the Sikari, this one, um, the Sitali curling the tongue might be a little odd in public. If you're you know, standing in line, you're really hot, you want to try to cool off. Um, that curling your tongue might um, garner a few side glances, but um, the Sikari um, is something that you probably could do easily in public places. It's putting your teeth together and your lips are in a big smile. So you're happy, happy camper. Uh, and then you inhale with a hiss. And then close your mouth and exhale through your nose. So. I think smiling releases endorphins anyway, so that might just cool you off in, in making you feel better. So those are the two pranayamas for cooling during the uh, pitta season. And we'll pause for a few moments to uh, do a meditation. And the mudra I'd like to introduce today is called jala. And it's uh, actually a water mudra. And that um, water evokes uh, cooling feelings of being cool and just calming as well. So the uh, Jala Mudra is putting your thumb and your pinky together and extending your three fingers. And there's another cooling um, technique and I, it starts with a P, I'm trying to remember what it is. I didn't write it down, prana or something? No, it's not that. Um, but anyway, you bring your ring finger into the mix. So that one with the just the pinky and the thumb, which is jala, and then the other one is a pinky ring and thumb together. So let's just take a few moments to do medita uh, meditation, brief meditation, and um, you could use either of those mudras or your favorite one, or just relax your hands on your lap, and we'll begin our practice shortly.
You may open your eyes now and we'll start our asana practice. Again, find yourself a nice comfortable seated position. And we'll start with some shoulder shrugs. So just relax, gently relax your shoulders. And then on the inhale, you're gonna move your shoulders forward up toward your ears. And on the exhale, move them toward your back, bringing your shoulder blades together and then shoulders down toward the mat. Inhale, up toward your ears. Rounding the shoulders to the back, exhaling as you bring them down. Inhale, up, rounding up toward your ears. Exhale, rounding down your back toward the mat. Just keep going with deep inhales and deep exhales. Focusing on keeping your shoulders nice and relaxed. This is not intended to wind them up and get them tight. It's intended to relax and just loosen them up. And then if you'd like to switch directions, again, keeping nice and relaxed. This is where we often hold a lot of our stress. So if you can just take a moment to unwind your stress and relax, it's a wonderful thing. It's a cooling thing. And bring your fingertips to each side on your mat. We'll do some sun breaths. So with your back, your spine, and back of your neck nice and straight and tall. We're going to inhale, bringing our arms up over our head. Palms come together. And then exhale, bringing our hands back down toward the mat. Inhale, lifting arms up. Big inhale, deep inhale. And exhale, bringing them back down. Black flies, didn't think about that. <laughs> I came out. Inhale, come back up. And if you want, you try out uh, one of the two cooling breaths, the two pranayamas that we talk about, Tali and uh, Sukita. <laughs> Inhale, exhale down. And one last time, inhale, exhale. And we'll take twists. So we're gonna bring our arms back up overhead, twist our torso to the left and bring our right hand down on our left kneecap. Left hand comes down behind our hip, sending our gaze out to the left side of the mat. Take a deep inhale and deep exhale. And then raise up our arms overhead and then twist our torso to the right, bringing our left hand down on our right knee and our right hand behind our hips. Spine is nice and straight and tall, sending our gaze to the right side of our mat. Big inhale. Big exhale. And then inhale, lifting our arms up. We'll do this on each side one more time. Twisting over to the left. Right hand on left knee, left hand right behind your hips. Spine's nice and straight and tall. Chest is open. Big inhale, big exhale. And one last time, up and over, twisting to the right. Hands come down, gaze sent, is sent out to the right, and a big inhale, and big exhale. Come back to center. We will set up in the cobbler's pose. So bring your soles of your feet together. You can interlace your fingers and wrap them around your toes. 
or if you'd like, you can hold on to your ankles with your hands. Again, creating a nice straight back, tall back. Now we're gonna do some um, seated cat cows. So we're gonna look down, look toward our navel, so our back rounds. Slowly come down and then inhale, lifting our head up, sending our gaze up toward the sky, but at an angle, about a 45 degree angle, maybe the top of a tree, not straight up to the sky. And then exhale, bringing your head back down, come to look at your navel. It's one of the nine dristy points rounding your back, feeling that stretch in the back spine, and inhale, come back up, sending your gaze up to the top of the trees, and then exhale, come back down one last time, looking at your navel, rounding the back, then inhale, come back up, Sending your gaze up, straightening your back, creating a little bit of an arch in the lower back, and then come back to a neutral position. Now we're gonna roll down <clears throat> onto our backs. We'll do another version. You can roll down either one vertebrae at a time or express method. And we're gonna do another version of cat cow. And this is a supine cat cow. So you're doing on um, laying down. Bring your knees hip width apart. Bring your heels up toward your hips. Hands are alongside with your palms facing down to support you. And then we're gonna round our back, bringing the lower back down to the mat, creating a bowl shape in our stomach. And then we're gonna arch our back, bringing our tailbone down, creating a little bit of arch, which you could pass your hand underneath your back. And then inhale, rounding your back. You may feel that you can push down into your feet to create this a little bit better. And then exhale, arching your back bringing your tailbone down solidly into the mat. And inhale, rounding the back. Exhale, arching the back. The idea is to keep your hips on the, on the mat, but if you feel that just raising up a little bit of, on your feet, so there's a little space between your hips and your mat, you can try it that way as well. And stretch out, work our lower back our, and our core area. The stronger our core, the stronger we are. And one last time and bring your back down to the mat. We'll bring our knees to our chest and give them a nice hug. And then we're gonna put, um, bring our hands back down to the mat, palms facing down into the mat to support us. And we're gonna send, keeping our knees over our chest, send our right foot out. Both feet are gonna remain flexed, pointing, our toes are pointing up to the sky. We're gonna send our right leg out at an angle, about 45 degree angle up. So our lower back is on the mat. And then we're gonna, with control, slowly lower our heel, right heel to the mat, keeping our toes flexed. And then inhale slowly with control raise that right leg back up to the 45 degree angle and bring it back in so your both knees are over your chest and then we'll do that with the left leg 
So again, keeping your toes flexed up to the sky, extend your left leg out at a 45 degree angle and gently, but with control, lower your left leg down to the mat and then lift it back up to the 45 degree angle and bring it back in so both knees are over your chest. We'll do that two more times. So extend your right leg all the way out, toes are flexed, slowly with control, lower your right leg down. Inhale, lift it back up. Bring that leg over your chest, extend your left leg out, toes are flexed, pointing up. Gently with control, lower the left leg down. And then back up again. Bring that left leg back over your chest. And one last time, right leg extends fully out. Lowering with control. And then back up again. Bring the right knee in over your chest. Extend the left leg out, keeping your toes flexed. And then gently, but with control, lower that left leg down. And then bring it back up. And then bring both legs back in. Give them a nice gentle hug. And then we're gonna come up to uh, hands and knees. So you can do that a couple of ways. You can tip your legs over and come back up to um, hands and knees, or you can rock and roll by putting your hands underneath your knees and start rocking until you actually come up to a seated position. And then from your seated position, just uh, pivot over your legs and come up to tabletop. So with tabletop, our fingers are spread wide apart, index finger pointing up to the top of the mat. Your wrist is right below your shoulders. Your weight is evenly distributed in both hands. Your navel's tucked to the spine to create a nice flat back. And your knees are under your uh, hips. And then we're gonna extend our right leg all the way to the bottom of the mat. And then bring that right foot over to the left side of the mat so it's actually off the mat. <clears throat> and then gently turn your head to look to our left foot. And then bring our right foot leg back, coming back to tabletop. We'll extend the left foot down and then bring the left foot over to the right side of the mat so it's off the mat and then gently turning our head so like we're saying yes or no you know uh, shaking our head yes or no shake your head no to the right and then gaze back to your And then bring that left leg back. And we'll do that again on each side. So extend your right foot down, bottom of the mat, extend it over to the left. Shake your head no over to the left. And then send it back to look at your left foot or your right foot rather. Left side, right foot. And then bring that right leg back to tabletop. And one last time, extend your left foot down to the bottom of the mat. Bring the left foot over to the right side of the mat. Shake your head no to the right and then gaze back to your foot. And then bring your left leg back, back to tabletop. We're going to uh, walk our hands down the mat and come into extended puppy. So 
just keeping your knees and your hips exactly where they are. We're gonna keep our hands um, flat on the mat and walk them down so that your chest comes down to the mat. Forehead comes down to the mat. Bring your third eye to the mat for extended puppy. And then we're gonna start walking our hands back, bringing our hips down to our ankles. So just slide your hands along the mat, bringing your hips down toward your ankles and come into child's pose with your arms extended out front. And then bring yourself back up to tabletop. <clears throat> Tuck your toes under and walk your hands back and coming into a squat on your tippy toes. Push down into the toes to lift up to mountain. So during pitta season, what they suggest um, doing types of yoga asanas, um, the exercises would include twists and forward folds and chest openers. So today's practice has a lot of that and those are theoretically will cool you off in different ways. Um, I think that kind of encompasses all the, <laughs> the asanas, but that's what, that's what they say. So we'll come into mountain position. So lift uh, your feet are about hip width apart, lifting our toes up off the mat, stretching them out as far as you can stretch them, and then bring them back down into the mat, lifting your heels up off the mat, coming up onto your tippy toes, and then bring your heels back down to the mat. Really feeling that connection to your mat, to the earth, really rooting down. So with our legs, they're nice and straight and strong with a gentle bend in your knees. Navels tucked to your spine. Shoulders are relaxed and rolled back, creating a nice long spine back of the neck. Chins tucked a little bit toward your neck, toward your chest. And the crown of your head is straight up, reaching for the sky. That's mountain pose and the essentials of good posture. So inhale, sweep our hands up overhead, bringing them up together, and then exhale, sweep them all the way down, bending your knees deeply, bring your hands down to the mat. Just take a moment to check in here, feeling any tension in your body, perhaps send a deep nourishing breath toward that tension. And inhale, bring your hands up to your shins, flattening out your back to half forward fold. Gaze is down, nice long spine. And then dropping your head, the crown of your head down toward the mat, down toward the earth or forward fold. And then sweep your hands from the mat all the way up overhead. And we're gonna send our fingertips up to the sky and come up on our tippy toes for palm tree. We'll just sway here for a moment. Just see how our balance is today. If you are feeling a little wobbly like I am, I think I've because I'm out of my element here, find a dristy where you can focus your gaze. 
straight ahead. And then come back down on your heels, bring your hands back down to the mat, bending your knees to support your lower back. Inhale, sweep your hands up to your shins, straightening your spine, creating a nice flat back. Gaze is going down toward the floor or to earth. And then dropping the crown of your head down toward the ground, toward gold. And inhale, sweeping our hands all the way up overhead again. We're going to take our right hand and wrap it around our left wrist, keeping both arms close to the ears. And then we're going to tip our torso to the right. So your left hip's going to kind of pop toward the left a little bit more. And we're going to have a, a this is not the support stretch we usually do. This is called side stretch. And then inhale, come back up. Switch hands and bring your left hand around your right wrist. And then pop your right hip out toward the right, tipping your torso over toward the left. And then inhale, come back up. And sweep your hands back down to the mat, bending your knees to support your lower back. Inhale, bring your hands up to your shin, flat back, half forward fold. And then exhale, send the crown of your head down toward the ground. And inhale, sweeping your hands. Whoops, actually, nope. Inhale keeping your hands on the mat, <laughs> sorry. We're gonna place our left hand in front of our left foot and bend our left knee. Left hand in front of left foot, bending the left knee. We're gonna take our right hand and sweep it up toward the sky. So a forward fold with a twist. And if you can send your gaze up to your fingertips, that would be nice. And then bring your right hand back down. You switch hands so the right hand goes in front of the right foot. Right knee gets bent, left stays somewhat straight. Again, you will always want that gentle bend in your, your knees. Take your left hand, sweep it up to the sky, following your hand with your gaze. And then bring your left hand back down. And now we're gonna take our hands and sweep them from the mat up all the way up overhead. Palms come together. Palms come to heart center. And then palms come to the back of the hips where your fingertips are facing down. Shoulders are nice and relaxed and rolled back. Hips or legs are hip width apart and tucking your chin toward your chest and just drop your shoulders back or supported back. And come to that sweet spot where your breath is nice and regular. Nice even flow of inhales and exhales. And then inhale, come back up to mountain pose. How's everyone doing? We're gonna sweep our hands up overhead. Big inhale, big exhale, bringing our hands all the way down on the mat, bending our knees, and then bringing our feet back, come into a downward dog. So find your nice, comfortable spot for downward dog. And your fingertips are spread wide apart, index fingers pointing up to the top of the mat. And the weight are on your fingertips, the thumb and index finger in particular. So just to be sure there's no weight on your wrist. Arms are straight. Chest is reaching toward your thighs. 
And the drifty point for a downward dog is to look at your navel. So that will encourage your, your chest coming toward your thighs. Knees are bent or you can do the pedaling. Walk your dog. And then we'll take our left knee and bring it to our left elbow on the inhale. So lift the left knee, bring it to the left elbow, pushing off with your right toes. And then bring it back to downward dog, pedal out some more. And then inhale, bringing the left knee to the left elbow. And back to downward dog. And this last one, we're gonna bring our left foot all the way up between our hands. So inhale, lifting your left leg, bringing it up. You can guide it with your hands. Framing your foot with your hands, coming into runner's lunge. We're gonna plant our right hand on the mat and sweep our left hand all the way up to the sky. You can follow your hand with your gaze if that's comfortable. And then bring the left hand back down. We're gonna bring our left knee down to the mat and the top of your left foot comes down in the mat. We're gonna do a few half monkeys here. So we're gonna straighten out our front leg and you can ride that thigh with your chest as you're straightening it, bringing your forehead down toward your knee. Uh, yes, down toward your left knee. And then inhale, bring that knee back up so it's over your ankle and then extend your chest and your face forward. You lift your chin up just slightly. Feel that nice stretch in your, in your hips. And then back to half monkey. So straightening your left leg bringing your forehead down toward your knee. And inhale, bring that knee back up so it's over your ankle. And then open your chest, extending your chest forward, your face forward. And then again, one last time for half monkey. Riding your leg down, straightening your leg as much as what's comfortable, bringing the forehead down toward the knee. And then bringing the knee back over the ankle, extending your chest open, your gaze open. And if it's comfortable for you, lift your arms up to the sky. Big inhale, and then exhale, bringing them back down to the mat. We're gonna tuck our back foot under for runner's lunge, come back to runner's lunge, and then walk our hands to the right side of our foot and walk them over to the long side of the mat. We're gonna have our toes tucked toward us and our heels out. So you're a little bit of pigeon toed and you're in a half forward fold. So your, your head is upright, your back is nice and straight and long. We're gonna walk our hands over to the right side, right in front of our right foot and then walk our fingertips over to the left side so that they're over in front of the left foot. And then walk them back to center. 
I'm going to do some twists here. So if your hand reaches the mat or the floor comfortably, that's good. Or you may want to incorporate a block here. Then sweep your, uh, have your left hand planted on the mat. Sweep your left, your right hand up to the sky, following it with your gaze. And then bring that right hand back down, sweeping, planting your right hand, sweep your left hand up with a twist. And bring that hand back down. And then we're going to bend our knees, bring our hands to our hips, pivot our torso upright. And then we're going to switch our feet so that our toes are pointing toward the corners and our heels are tucked in. So kind of just reversing what your feet were doing. And then we're going to uh, have some stars and goddesses. So inhale, sweep your hands up, reaching for the stars, creating a star pose, and then bending your knees and bending your elbows so that your arms come into goal posts. Come down. And then we're going to take um, our torso and tip it over to the right. Just bringing our right elbow toward our thigh. And then come back up straight. And then tip it, your left elbow toward your left thigh. And then come back up straight. Inhale, reach for the stars. Stretch out and then come back down to goddess. Elbows are bent into gold posts, knees are bent, toes are pointing toward the corners of the mat. And we'll tip over to the right side. Inhale, come back up and exhale, tip over to the left side. And come back up. Again, reach for the sky, for the stars, cooling moonlight, cooling stars. And then bring our hands. Actually, we're going to pivot our feet, both feet, toward the front of the mat, pivoting everything over to the left side. And then coming, bringing your hands down, coming back into runner's lunge. And then bring your left foot back to meet your right foot into downward dog. You pedal out here for a moment. We bring our knee to the mat right behind our left wrist. Coming into pigeon pose, we we'll slide our right foot down the mat. And if you have your blanket or your cushion right here, you can support your left hip with that blanket. We're going to walk our hands back, opening our chest, nothing up like a crab pigeon. And then walk our hands down to reclining pigeon. And inhale, bringing yourself back up. Tuck your uh, right toes, your toes at the bottom of the mat under, and lift back up to downward dog. And we'll do that all on the uh, other side. So start off with pedaling out on your downward dog. And then we're going to bring our right knee to our right elbow, pushing off with our left toes. A variation of a plank pose, which 
build your core muscles. Bring it back to downward dog, pedal out. Right knee comes to the right elbow on the inhale, pushing off of the left toes. And then back to downward dog. And then this right foot will come between your hands, coming into runner's lunge. So inhale, lifting your right foot, bring it up so it is framed between your hands. And then plant your left hand on the mat, sweeping your right hand up to the sky, following it with your gaze, if that's comfortable. Back heels extended to the back of the hat mat, back of the mat. And then come bring your right hand down. Bring your left knee down onto the mat. Top of your left foot comes down on the mat. We'll do some half monkeys again. So straighten your front leg out, following it, following it with your chest on your thigh, bringing your forehead toward your knee. And then inhale, bring your knee up over your ankle, opening your chest, extending your chest forward. Gaze goes forward. And then again, bringing your right leg into a straight position or as straight as, as, as is comfortable for you. Bringing your forehead down toward your knee. Inhale, bringing your knee up over your ankle, extending your chest forward. Gaze goes forward. And then one last time, straightening your right leg out. Always keep that soft, gentle bend in your knee though. Forehead comes down. Then inhale, bringing your knee up over your ankle, extending your chest forward, gaze forward. And then if you can, bring your arms up to the sky. And then back down to the mat. Tuck your left foot under, coming back up to runner's lunge. We're gonna walk our hands to the left side. So bring both the hands to the left of your foot and then walk it, hands to the long side of the mat. I'm going to reverse. So your toes are tucked towards you, heels are out, kind of pigeon toed, and you're in a half forward fold, so your arms are fully extended. We'll walk our hands to the, we'll start with the left, walk them over to the left so that they're right above our left toes. And then walk them back to center, and then walk them over to the right so that they're right above the right toes. And then walk them back to center. You plant your right hand down and sweep your left hand up overhead, following it with your gaze. And then bring that left hand down, swap it out, put the left hand on the mat, sweep the right hand up, to the sky, following it with your gaze. And then bring your right hand down. We bend our knees, place our hands on our hips and tilt our torso upright. And then we're gonna switch our feet so that our toes are pointing to the corners, heels are tucked in. Lift our arms up to the sky for star pose. So really stretch, reaching for the stars. And then we're going to bend our knees, bend our elbows, come into goddess. 
tilt our torso over to the left. Left elbow comes down toward the thigh. Come back upright. Tilt our torso over to the right. And then come back upright. One last time over to the left. And come back upright and over to the right. And come back upright. Stretch our arms and our legs up to the sky for star pose. And then back down to goddess. One more tilt to the left. One more tilt to the right. And come back upright. Stretch again toward the sky, toward the stars. And then pivot your feet, both feet toward the right. And then we're gonna come bring our hands down, coming into runner's lunge. And then back to downward dog. Pedal out here for a moment or two. And then we're gonna bring our right knee to the mat, right behind our right wrist. The lower part of your leg is, is tilted as whatever's comfortable for you. It could be straight, it could be at an angle. Um, if you're really agile, it could be um, horizontal. And then slide your left foot to the back of the mat. Walk your hands back, open for pigeon pose. Again, you can bring your, your blanket behind or below your right hip to support that. And then walk your hands down, coming into recline pigeon pose, bringing your third eye to the mat. And then come back up, tuck your um, left toes, the back toes under, and come back up to downward dog. And just pedal out here for a moment. And then bring your knees to the mat, back to tabletop. We'll do some thread the needles. So we're gonna come into tabletop with our wrists right below our shoulders. And take our right hand, sweep it up to the sky, and then sweep it under our torso. But we're going to stay in the upright position. Just sweep it under your torso and over to the left side, and then bring it back, sweep it up to the sky again, and then sweep it under your torso over to the left side, and then sweep it up again to the sky. And this time we're gonna sweep it down under your torso and lower our right shoulder and right ear to the mat, coming down to the mat. And then lifting our left arm up to the sky, opening our chest, creating a nice twist in our upper body. Bring your left hand back down to the mat. Push down into the left hand, coming back up to tabletop. Do that on the other side. So sweep our left arm up to the sky and sweep it under our torso over to the right side of the mat. Then sweep it back through all the way up to the sky again. 
and then bring it back underneath the torso over to the right side of the mat. And then one last time, sweep it under all the way up to the sky. And then sweep it down under your torso. This time we're gonna bring our left shoulder and left ear down to the mat. And bring our right arm up to the sky. And bring our right arm down. We're going to come roll down on our back. So you can roll down again, either one vertebrae at a time or express method. I think I'm going to take the express method down. Just going to roll down. Bring your knees to your chest and walk back and forth to give your lower back a nice massage. And then plant to your feet on the outer edges of your mat. So the outer, I should say the outer edge of your foot's oh, planted on the edge of the mat. On both sides, your knees can come together. Then bring our arms out to shoulder height. Palms facing down. And then we're going to tilt both knees over to the right side. Our right hand stays with the palm facing down, but we're going to slowly turn our gaze to our left palm. And as we turn our gaze to the left palm, we're gonna flip our left palm up toward the sky. And inhale, bring knees back to center, both palms go down, knees drop to the left side of the mat, head slowly turns to the right side, and your right palm flips up. These are somatic windshield wipers. So inhale, bring your knees back to center, both palms go down. Knees drop to the right side. Slowly turn your gaze to the left hand, left palm turns up toward the sky. So inhale, bring your knees back. Palms go down, knees drop to the left, right palm goes up toward the sky as you send your gaze to your hand, right hand. And see if you can get a nice flow going with inhale, bringing your knees up, and then dropping to the other side, pivoting your hand up toward the sky as you turn your gaze toward it. It's nice smooth movements, nice fluid movements. and bring your knees back to center, head back to center, and lower your legs, extending them to the bottom of the mat and prepare for a Shavasana. So bringing your heels out to the corners of the mat, just let your feet pop open. Relax the weight of your legs into the mat. Relax the weight of your hips into the mat. Relax the weight of your shoulders and upper back into the mat. Relax the muscles of your face. Gently place a soft smile on your lips.
Today, I have a poem for you by Mary Oliver. It's titled, The Summer Day. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean, the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? 